welcome back to another EDH deck tech video. Today I'm going to be showing my Tristani Selesnia's Voice Primal Surge deck. Uh, this deck came about actually before my previously listed uh, Sigarda deck, uh, the Good Sigarda, which turned into a Good Stuff deck, an inheritance deck. Uh, this deck was taken apart for that to start with, and then I had enough to rebuild it. So, we're back! <laughs> um, this is actually the end of this deck's life. I'm going to get rid of this for the other Sigarda, the bad one, and make a more Voltron one. Um, but for the time being, let's show this deck. Tristani, if you are not familiar with her, is a pretty stringent, a green, green, white, white. The four mana is a little hard sometimes to get there, but uh, four mana for a two, five dryad. Uh, she has two abilities. Uh, one of them is essentially a populate, a copy a token I own for three and tapping her. That's not relevant. Uh, there's not a lot of token creation in the deck. I think there's about three uh, actually good token makers. A lot of people will read Tristani and think I'm playing tokens, and that's great as a deterrent. The important thing for this deck is that whenever a creature enters the battlefield under my control, uh, I gain life per the creature's toughness. Uh, this is the only reason Tristani is the commander of this deck. Um, yeah, on a side note, I've had to explain so far twice that of these three bodies here, Tristani is actually all of them. Tristani is a dryad. You may want to actually check the actual artwork, like a, a zoomed in wallpaper style of the artwork. Tristani is a dryad. Uh, this is like a, a tree. Um, all of them are essentially one being. So, yeah, complicated. Anyways, here mainly just for lifelink. There was, or life gain. Uh, there was some other life gain nonsense. The deck has a lifing deck at one point, and it's just evolved uh, into this. Now let's go ahead. While I'm at it, there is one single spell in the deck. This is the only sorcery. There are no instances. Again, this is a primal surge deck. So if you're unfamiliar with what that means, it means that this is the only spell. It's all permanent, and if this spell is allowed to resolve, I almost always win the game. Uh, because it, it essentially exiles the top card of my deck, and if it's a permanent, it comes into play, and then I may, may ability, not must, repeat. Uh, so if there's no spells in my deck, every permanent in my deck, the entire deck, comes straight into play. Uh, there's a few insta-win kind of scenarios that a lot of people like to run. Um, Mine is not exactly an insta-win scenario, but it's usually a back-breaking scenario that's nearly impossible for the opponents to interact with. So, essentially, if everyone in my group knows that if this spell is allowed to resolve, I'm just going to win the game, and they just pick up their cards. Kind of cheesy, but let's get it out of here. Now, the deck has a bunch of creatures. Again, Tristani's there just to gain life, so there's a massive complement of creatures in the deck. Um, I have recently taken out the uh, Primordial Sage and whatever this whole of the Harvest guy is for an elf deck, so they're not in the deck, but they should be. Um, so we have Mana Dorks. There's a few that just tap for mana. So we have the Avisense Pogrom, the Bird's Eye. This one's really good. Well, this both of these are ideal for getting Tristani out because of her stringent colors. Sack Elder, same thing, gets a land into play. Magus of the Library is a placeholder. I have actually taken Soul Ring out of the deck. This is the placeholder for Soul Ring. I just wanted a deck that does not run Soul Ring, so it's fun saying I have a deck without Soul Ring, and he's a cool card anyways. He's essentially just a two-drop mana dork. The draw effect on him doesn't happen. Um, if you're unfamiliar with the base of this, this is a library, library of Alexandria in a creature form. Uh, we have Sylvan Caryatid as another placeholder. This was one of those draw guys. Now, what the deck does... Oh, let's keep on going. There's Yalva My Elder, just a generically good card. He comes in and he usually equates to three cards to us. And Nisa is going to replace herself to a land and hopefully flip to that. Um, Corsair is another way of getting lands off the top of our... Well, the only way. There's no longer a... Uh, what is the creature called? Whatever. And this is the letting us play a land off the top of our deck, and also a little bit of life gain. Here we go. Now, this entire chunk here, uh, all these creatures, into the battlefield and get us a land. The trick with Primal Surge is, yeah, you can do big mana real fast off of elves, but you have no way of tutoring this. So, although it's a very minor percent change, getting the creatures that enter the battlefield and get lands from your deck into play does thin your deck. And they are also harder to deal with land than the creatures that tap for mana. So all of these, enter the battlefield and get land. Um, 
literally each and every single one, is an inner battlefield, grab a land, put it into play. I'm actually running Solemn in a green deck. Uh, some of these are just not optimal, like a four drop that's bad. Uh, these are new. This is actually a brand new one that just came out. It's literally an Ondu Giant with the power and toughness played around with a little bit. We have a five mana four four. <laughs> and an actually good one is Ulvenwald Hydra. This one can get any land out of my deck, a non basic land like a Yavmai Hollow, um, something like that, and put that into play tapped. Now let's go on through the rest of the creatures. Uh, there's another stack here. These are all enter the battlefield, do stuff creatures. Um, this was a harmonic sliver until this new guy was printed, sacrificing the effect of getting rid of an enchantment for the trade-off of slowing down artifact ramp. It's actually really good. I love this card. Uh, this is actually a card I can sometimes consider playing in a more competitive decks. Like uh, if your opponents are playing all sorts of stormy stuff with lots of quick artifact mana dumping their hands wheeling, this is a fantastic stacks effect to stop them from using the artifact mana immediately. We have ways of getting a big creature. I like getting Woodfall or Woodland Bellower with this guy, or using the Bellower to get this guy to go get something else because it's like a three drop tool package. You'll notice a lot of my creatures are three drops because they are good with the Woodland Bellower. Uh, we have a Rex Age, another three drop, likes to blow things up. We have a Stone Cloaker, another three drop that can flicker something. So I can use the Bellower to flicker this to can rebuy the Bellower later. We have another flicker saving grace effect. This is great at save, holding up just to, someone's gonna try to remove something or even just using her to rebuy some trigger and gain some life off Tristani. Acidic slime is what you would expect to see in this type of deck. Same thing with Karmic Guide, just reanimation. And Sun Titan is just another way of pulling permanence back. Uh, we have the Woodland Bellower. Again, this is a fantastic card. I would highly recommend this in creature-based casual decks because you can just get, it's like Sun Titan. It's like there's such a good package of effects you guys can pull, these guys can pull. Uh, we have Eternal Witness and the Green Warden of Marasa, essentially a, a more expensive double Eternal Witness sometimes, but uh, you know, flickering this guy with like a, a Resto Angel is pretty good. And we have two anti-attack creatures. We have the Sunblast Angel and the Angel of the Dire Hour. This one is probably not good enough for the deck. Again, this should be something like the uh, Primordial Sage, but uh, both of these essentially get rid of creatures. Uh, this one, the Sunblast Angel, is actually an important one. I'll sh come back with that shortly here. Let's go on to the last bit of the creatures. These are just idle threats and nuisances. Um, my deck doesn't attack unless it is in the point of where it's going to win. Um, I mean, I don't always have to attack to win with this deck. So Peacekeeper is fantastic. Again, I want a high life total for a few effects in this deck. He's very good at doing that. And Caddy Erector is also a great way for people to not want to attack me. Uh, this used to be a global enchanted enchanter's deck. Uh, not auras, but things like um, Collective Blessing, I think is what it's called. All creatures you control get plus three, plus three, and crap like that. Um, the deck does have a bunch of enchantments, but this will most likely just go get like a Murari's Wake or a Zendikar Resurgence, something like that. Uh, Bastion Protector was here as a leftover when I did test with Sigarda, the bad one, but this is actually pretty good. Like this can make Tristani indestructible and it, it enters and Tristani immediately grows to like a 4-7, which is relevant um, sometimes. Uh, Crested Sun Mare is a brand new card. This is fantastic with Trisani. Um, what happens is if these two are out, or Trisani is out and Crested Sun Mare resolves, you gain 5, and at the end step you get a 5-5. Five five. And then every time you trigger Trisani, you get another 5-5, five five, and you gain 5 life. And then it just, you create an army out of nowhere. And this one little horse in Tristani is fantastic. Uh, let's go here. Oh, you can also use Tristani to populate this. This is one of the few things in the deck that makes tokens. So, for example, you can make a secondary token on the turn after you have the first token. So you then gain the life and you can make another token. Uh, they interact very well. Uh, same thing, Bane Slayer, generic threat, lifelink on the body. It's a nice way of making people not attack us and gaining life. Uh, Feldar Sovereign is the, one of the cheesy I win cards. I did have the uh, enchant enchantment in here. Uh, what is it? If you're upkeep, if you have 50 or more, you just win the game. Uh, true endurance or whatever. That came out. It's much harder, or that I mean, essentially when you resolve something like that, if you can't flash it out at the end of the opponent's turn, you're gonna have a hard time actually keeping the life. We're too vulnerable to removal if your opponents are actually well equipped. Uh, Feldar Sovereign has lifelink and vigilance. So yes, the creature is most likely gonna die. 
But, I mean, he does something on his own. He can still attack and gain life and defend. Uh, Sarah Ascendant is an annoying one drop. This is like one of the best one drops this deck can hope for. It just is a one drop. Six, six, if you are on turn one um, with a lifelink and you're going to get out of hand really fast. A Rampaging Baloth is another token generator. Again, this is adequate with Tristani. It's not super, like I'm not focusing on making tokens, but a landfall equating to plus four life with Tristani, and then I can tap Tristani to make another 4-4 four, four and gain four is pretty good. A Mary Shepherd is fantastic. So we already saw a secure tribe elder with my earlier stuff. Where does he go? I'll just bring him back real quick here. If I can find it. Okay, anyway, secure tribe elder. <laughs> if you're familiar with the card, it enters, you can sack it, you get a land into play. If you use secure tribe elder and this card, you can pull every planes in your deck into play because she will continually pull secure tribe elder from your graveyard to play. Um, you can then use Secure Tribe Elder one last time to get like a forest. Then you can pop something from your graveyard to your hand. Uh, those two together, it's not blatantly obvious. So you can literally just wait till the end of the opponent's turn. So you can untap with like 10 extra mana. Um, and it's just a really good interaction. She is fantastic on her own. Uh, again, you can use something like a, a fetch land to get double triggers. Um, you can use fetch lands to get like non-basics, like a prairie, whatever. But I mean, this is just a really good card. It does not actually going to, it's not gonna attack very well. Seven mana for a four, four flying sucks. But that recursion is very powerful. Dragon Lord Dramoka is another life linking deterrent, essentially something that yes, we could attack with, but this is more or less here to bait out removal, make people not want to attack you. And if you need to, you can attack them. Avison, again, this is 100% a deterrent. Um, like this may, there is a, uh, uh, what's it called? the defense of the heart in this deck so yeah she could come out early out of nowhere she's not really intended to um, but this is more here to keep us safe since we do have a tendency to ramp pretty hard in the deck um, Voron Clicks is here for obvious reasons again it's just a bait spell and these creatures are not actually intending on killing the opponent these are here to create hard to deal with board presences and gain life and almost stacks them out the important one here is Elish Norn um, she is basically the most important creature in the entire deck. Not because I'm screwing with the opponent's creatures. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show there's enchantments coming up. The way my Primal Surge deck wins is by using Elish Norn and Nature's Revolt. So Nature's Revolt, uh, there's a, an earlier version of this from uh, Legends. It just costs one mana less. Um, and there's other ones that make your lands one ones. This is a five drop enchantment. All lands, including mine, are two two creatures that are still lands. So your lands, essentially, if you play a land for your turn, has summoning sickness. Um, Elish Norn will kill my opponent's lands. That's literally the whole trick of the deck. If Primal Surge is allowed to resolve, these two will come into play. You can't respond med re mid resolution other than like floating mana. So these two will come into play. All my opponents lose their lands. And then I have mine, like every permit on my deck into play. <laughs> there is a backup plan, of course, because people like to bribery or remove Elish Norn from the game, or I may need to resolve her earlier. I will not cast this unless I'm about to win the game. The backup being uh, Sunblast Angel. Like I can sometimes cast this and float mana or whatnot and have Sunblast Angel come in if I have some way of saving my own lands. Because my opponent's tapped lands will then be destroyed. Um, <laughs> I mean, this is kind of a janky interaction. There are much better two to three card interactions you can use Primal Surge to win the game with. You can just get a Necroma's Memorial and attack them with a giant creature or a Crater Hoof or whatever boring thing you want to do. This is my preference because this is funny. <laughs> um, let's go through the rest of the enchantments. There is, of course, a Sylvan Library. I am in a color that, or a color combination that has hard draw. Uh, so this is ideal. Survival of the fittest. This is probably going to linger if I do go back to Sigarda so I can do the uh, Angel of Glory's Rise combos with humans. We have Defense of the Heart. This can sometimes come out early and then all of a sudden there's an Avis and end of War and Clicks. Enjoy. We have Armadillo Cloak and True Conviction for some lifelink. Again, because I do want to gain a lot of life in this deck. True Conviction can sometimes make my weenie creatures actually a threat. Marshall's Anthem for another recursion. I love holding onto this card until the last minute. People love blowing up my big expensive creatures, so paying like eight mana to pop two giant threats back is great. 
we have Aura of Silence and Aura Shards as two pseudo threats, uh, annoying Staxi threats. More things for the opponents to waste removal on while I'm just building up life. Then we have Asceticism. Again, I have some obvious threats like Elshnor, and people do like to kill Stristani after they're familiar with what I'm trying to do. Uh, we have Mirari's Wake and Zendikar Resurgent, a good draw tech. Now let's go through the last bit of non-land permanence, and we're getting up to the end. We have a two-drop ramp and a two-drop ramp. Again, Soul Ring should be in the deck. I just don't want to have Soul Ring in every deck, and it's not. No, I guess it, it does make the deck better, but I didn't really want to put it in here. Uh, we have Alive Crafter's Bestiary, another new card. This one is a great inclusion to most green elf type or creature type effects. Every green mana you add to your creature essentially can draw a card, so I didn't say that right. Anytime you cast a creature, you can just add a card by casting or adding a green mana, then draw a card, blah. Anyways, you also get an upkeep scry like what Thassa gives you. Good card. We have a birthing pod. We have so many enter the battlefield triggers and effects in the deck, we can just keep chaining good value. Phyrexian Processor. Now we're getting to the more classically known Tristani cards. Tristani, again, I'm not focusing on tokens, but this is a good excuse to focus on tokens. I can, if I'm still at 40 life, when Tristani's out, and I have eight mana to cast and activate once, and I know my opponents don't have like a Crows and Grip or something, I can literally pay 35 life into this. And as soon as this resolves, I can retain and activate, or I can wait till my opponents well, retaining and activating doesn't mean my opponents can't kill Tristani in response, but if these two are allowed to survive on the same turn and I can activate, I can gain all the life back. I can then use Tristani to populate the token. I can start making double tokens because this and Tristani can make a token. I can gain a lot of life very fast. I have easily broken 500 plus life after one turn cycle of these two going around. Kind of dumb. Now, the reason I'm all about the life gain is, of course, Aether Flux Reservoir. So, Tristani, like if I have like a turn one life linker, or Tristani resolves and I get some big butt toughness thing, or Armadillo Cloak, I can very quickly just resolve an Aether Flux Reservoir and kill someone. Um, I have killed someone on turn five with an Aether Flux Reservoir with a ramped out Tristani. Uh, this is somewhat obnoxious. I mean, this. I'm assuming it's more expected now, but for the first few months I played, well I didn't play this for months, so for the first like month I played this, no one saw this coming uh, because they were used to seeing this out of my storm deck or any storm deck or a deck that plays lots of spells and wheels, not a life gain creature deck. Like <laughs> all of a sudden having a giant gun come out and bow, gotcha, um, was just a shock. Uh, but most of my groups are all very much aware of this now, and I'm assuming this has become a known thing for Tristani players. Um, this is just one of the best win conditions. So again, Primal Surge. If all of if Tristani is out when Primal Surge resolves, all of my creatures are also entering play. Um, if depending on the timing of Elish Norn, all my lands are coming into play and gaining me two life because that enchantment. Um, so, I mean, if this comes out and I've gained like easily 100 life from all my creatures coming to play, 100% gonna be able to murder like all of my opponents. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> Let's go on to the lands to finish up the deck. We have basically the, the lands you expect to see in a semi-optimized list. I'm not running all of the fetch lands. I'm only playing these two on color fetch lands. Coming to play tap fetch land that can get non-basics and the good one. We have three fetchable non-basic lands. The forest, gar or the forest plains. I like this one because you can cycle and this deck does tend to draw too many lands. We have just generic colorful lands. Uh, Horizon Canopy is great because you can sack it later if you don't need the card or the land. We have a come to play tap land. This is maybe the first one to cut if you're doing optimization because scrying is not always that good compared to immediate access to mana. Uh, we have, again, this one is situational. You may have to discard or come to play tap. It just it just bends. Uh, brush land is ridiculously expensive because of modern Eldorazi Tron whatnots. Core Haven and a Yavmai Hollow being the two legendary non basics I like to get, and a Crows and Verge to help get more like the, the Fetch Land or the, the Shock Land and the, the Tango Land out. Then we have a whole bunch of these DCI, like Mirrodinish era uh, Force and Planes. I normally would put more Force in here, but because of the Emeria Shepherd, I do have a fair, fairly high number of Planes. And again, that is important. 
Tristani is exactly two of each, and if you want to see her consistently on turn three or four with your ramp, depending on what you got, you do have to have good colored mana. Uh, but yeah, so this is my Tristani list. It is, it's a funny list. It is your typical, I won't say typical, it is a Primal Surge list. Most Primal Surge lists will run red because they want to use Perforos and Avengers in the car to just end the game. Um, or even just, yeah, there's a lot of ways you can take this. This is my preference because seeing funny enchantments blowing up people's lands, it's not an instant game win, but it's, it, it ends the game. Um, but yeah, any feedback, I'm always open. Again, this is, I'm going to be taking this apart. I may revisit Tristani later. So I'm always open to feedback now or new cards. If I don't keep up with it, do, do let me know. Uh, but shortly this will be replaced with a cigar list and we will see that soon.